In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. But we open up the episode by talking about current events. We mention our sponsors. We have a lot of fun talking in the first part of this episode, known as the intro portion of the episode. That lasted 40 minutes. Here's what went down in today's episode. We start out by talking about elderberry and ibuprofen. You might not want to use those if you have the coronavirus. There's uh, been some warnings around their use, uh, in particular ibuprofen. Uh, then we talked about why Italy has si such a high high infection rate and death rate with the current coronavirus. It has a lot to do with their warm culture. Mm. Uh, one They're of the reasons too why friendly, love, I guess. Yeah, people love, it, uh, love that culture, but it might be one of their weaknesses. Then we talked about Florida. Oh, yeah, you know, the state that does uh, a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, well, they're having spring break, break parties right now. <laughs> we'll see what that turns out to. <laughs> yeah, then we, talk, then we talked about uh, the Japanese flu drug uh, and how it may actually be an effective treatment for coronavirus. We talked about how there's a phase one vaccine under trial at the moment, which is really, really fast, kind of cool. Uh, then we talked about optimizing your house. Look, you're at home. You're stuck there anyway. Why not optimize your home? Make it as awesome as possible. One of the most important things you could do for your health is sleep great. Uh, and one of the ways you can optimize your sleep is by optimizing the temperature of your bed. There's something called a chili pad that goes right on your bed, and it literally controls the temperature of your bed. You set the temperature, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever you want, and it keeps it that way to give you amazing sleep. Now, we work with this company, so we have a discount for you. Here's how you get the discount. Go to Chili Technology, that's C-H-I-L-I, technology.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get either 25% off the Chili Pad or 15% off the Uller. There's a code on the page for those discounts. Then we talked about how the, during the time of the dinosaurs, uh, days were much shorter. Uh, by studying snail shells, they were able to determine that there were 372 days uh, in a year. Adam refuted that. Yeah. He doesn't believe yep. in uh, snail shell science, apparently. <laughs> then we talked about Justin's visual impairment and how using blue light blocking glasses from <laughs> Felix Gray is helping him out. Now, Felix Gray makes stylish blue light blocking glasses. Now, you're probably looking at electronics a lot these days, especially since you're stuck at home. So you're watching TV, you're on your computer all day long, maybe even more than you were before. Well, blue light can cause problems. It can cause eye strain. It can give people headaches. If you're exposed to blue light right before you go to bed, it could prevent you from having a good night's sleep. So blue light blocking glass is very inexpensive investment that can improve your health. Felix Ray, of course, our favorite company for blue light blocking glasses. Uh, make sure you go check them out. Go to Felix Gray, that's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get hooked up with free shipping and free returns. And then we talked about Justin's cheese addiction. Please, everybody DM him, <laughs> offer him support. He's trying to Dude, fix his problem. Come on, it's not even a problem. It's normal. Oh, it's a problem. Then, <laughs> then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. What are rest pause sets and how can they be used in a workout? Uh, the next question, how would you go about curing a sugar addiction? You may have heard certain uh, fitness personalities on Instagram say that there is no such thing as a sugar addiction. And yes, it's true. Many of these people are, have zero experience and don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but nonetheless, we wanted to make sure we talked about what that looks like and how you can work around that. Uh, the next question, this person's a middle school PE teacher, very passionate about lifting. They want to know how we would go about teaching a weightlifting class if we were uh, the teacher. So we talk about how to train kids in that part of the episode. And then the final question this person's been addressing forward shoulder for about a year. They've made great progress, but they still have forward head. In other words, their head still juts forward. So they want strategies on how to work on that. Also, this month, look, we know you guys are at home. You're stuck at home, uh, but you still want to work out. You might not have uh, equipment at home. Um, and so you're thinking to yourself, what can I do besides you know push-ups, squats, and lunges? Well, here's what you could do. You could try MAPS anywhere now maps anywhere is a program that we design specifically for people to work out without equipment all you need are bands and your body weight but we designed it to be an effective muscle building fat burning workout that was the goal when we wrote the program we said we don't want just a at-home workout program that just to you know burn some calories get a little fit 
We want it to be very effective as if you were going to the gym. So maps anywhere, very effective. But because of what's going on right now, we decided to make it 50% off. That way everybody gets access to the program for far less of an investment. So it's half off, 50% off. Here's what you do for the discount. Go to mapswhite.com. That's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E.com and use the code white50. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0, no space for the discount. I saw this article um, it came out of France and now it's kind of making its rounds. Did you guys hear this about how uh, they, they in France they saw people who had the coronavirus who were using ibuprofen, how they were getting uh, like oh, terrible. I did, I did read an article around this. Yeah. Saying that they're, they're, it's, I guess it's, it's making it worse, right? Yeah, so apparently, and this isn't like 100% confirmed yet, but it's a warning coming from some of the doctors over there, and they're saying that some of the worst outcomes they're seeing are from patients who were using uh, uh, NSAIDs, steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, at high doses uh, during infection. And they think that the, the you know, the way that NSAIDs work, right? They stop, they block inflammation through. Yeah. What are the know, what are the it. what are the most popular ones that, that fall under that? Ibuprofen. What else? Uh, uh, aspirin. Aspirin. Naproxen. Yeah, so so like brand names would be like Advil, uh, Aleve, um, and, and then aspirin. So any so, of those. Yeah, and they're saying that that makes it worse. So they're saying if you have like the, you know, the cough and the fever, and you want to be, be precautious, um, use uh, uh, paracetamol or acetaminophen, you know, now, Tylenol. Is, basically, is the theory behind that because uh, the inflammation is is the is part of the process of you trying to your body to ward off the virus and you don't want to dampen that. Is that the, is that the theory? Well, so, uh, so I did some deeper reading, believe it or not, ibuprofen might actually reduce, uh, or, or prolong, um, any viral infection. So if you have the flu and you take ibuprofen, it does two things. One, it increases what's called uh, viral shedding. So you actually, uh, are more contagious when you're on uh, a ibuprofen or uh, a, another anti-inflammatory, oh, wow. you know, NSAID. Um, and number two, the infl- inflammatory, you know, re- reaction or response helps, I guess, your body fight the virus. And so that's that's one thing. But the other thing they said about uh, the NSAIDs is they think that they block an enzyme that uh, is crucial in your body's ability to fight the coronavirus. So it's it's it, I guess it slows down healing from most viruses, mm-hmm. but with the coronavirus, there's something specific about it that they say avoid ibuprofen uh, if you think you have the symptoms of coronavirus, which I thought was really interesting. Huh. Um, and then there's there's another uh, another thing that I read. So elderberry is uh, antiviral. It's well known antiviral, and through this whole thing that's going on, it's been flying off the shelves. Like literally, uh, people are buying up. Uh, buying them up all over Amazon or whatever. And there's been some articles where um, some scientists are are warning people and saying that they could cause something called a cytokine storm. Um, So cytokines are these, uh, uh, they get released and uh, they're like inflammatory signals in the body. And elderberry raises them a little bit, which is one of the reasons why it fights viruses. But apparently in some cases with people with coronavirus, that's what kills them is this 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 massive release of cytokines and if you throw elderberry on top of it uh it could be it could make it a lot worse although it's, it's so far from what i've read it's a small chance hmm. um so I, was any of this related to why it spread so fast in italy or was that oh you know different? why would that have to do with italy what like they, have lot, <laughs> they have a lot of berries in italy why would you say no that? i'm just wondering like because <laughs> because the that was the country that where it spread the the fastest. So. I know. Well, that, no, what that, does that have to do with elderberry? That has nothing to do with that. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're finding out why. Like uh, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Asshole, <laughs> what's going on over there, squinty guy? Huh? Yeah, you and your it. squinty eyes? Huh? What's going on over there? I'm fine, dude. <laughs> no, no. So, so uh, first off, with the elderberry, um, this is just—it's kind of speculative. So, and, and this just highlights that we don't know a whole lot about this virus. So that's that's basically what that's highlighting. So, most experts are saying probably not an issue. Some of them are saying, hey, don't overdose 
on elderberry if you have coronavirus because so what, of what, this small threat. What do you th what, so what do you think of, I mean, it, it sounds like it would be a good idea as uh, preventative, but then if you find out you have it, probably not a good idea to take it. Am I hearing that correctly? <clears throat> uh, possibly. Yeah, that's, that's possible. That's how I would interpret it, but I would, I would, cause you wrote a, you wrote a blog about the, the, I, that it's probably a good idea that you take it, right? Yeah. Well, elderberry is just, uh, it's just an antiviral, just general antiviral. So that's always been the recommendation from any herbalist or, you know, any health practitioner who, who uses natural remedies, they'll recommend elderberry. But, uh, hmm. you know, it's, again, I want to be very, I want to be clear with the caution because, this is a new virus. It's novel. One of the reasons why it's so uh, everybody's so scared of it is, you know, unlike the flu that's been, you know, killing humans for a thousand years, this type of coronavirus is just it's brand new. Yeah. So they don't really know 100 percent. But back to Italy, Justin, that's a good that's a good question, because Italy's death rate and, and infection rate is like insane. Right. Yeah. They're, I think they're they're about well, to surpass China. Didn't it wasn't uh, smoking. A, I don't know if like it, I mean, they're big smokers in Italy. Correct. Not more. Yeah, than, they not have, more than China, though, are they? Uh, no, but they're up there, dude. A, a lot of Italians smoke like crazy, mm. but it's also their lifestyle. Oh. It, Italians are, first off, extremely. Uh, the culture of Italy is extremely social. There's lots of touching, so it's kissing, it's handshakes, it's hugs, and then uh, of of all of, of a lot of cultures, uh, Italians in particular. Hmm. You have multi generations uh, living together and visiting a lot. So, grandparents living with grandchildren and and, and their children and right they, in China, you, know, you got all close proximity. Like you're on buses, trains, and just like everybody's like, you know, barely has any like room for themselves. So that 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 you know might be part of it too. Yeah. So like, what makes uh, Italian culture so attractive and so warm for a lot of people is what is its weakness. Uh, mm. with this virus so it's like you know one person gets it then they kiss this person over here just say hi to them yeah. that person and it just spreads and then everybody's visiting nonna and nonno and mm. everybody lives with their you know parents and then people are smoking oh, right. and so it just it just went it just exploded and so they think that's one of the reasons like why wildfire yeah you yeah were, you know are really you crazy. watching uh are you watching lane blast everybody right now he was he was ripping uh our favorite guy uh, dr integrity uh this morning Oh no, he wasn't. What yeah, was he yeah. You have to go on. His, he, I, he, I just saw him. He, he, I saw him do a tweet. I think it was this morning. It was this morning. It was it popped up in my feed this morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stepani did a, you know, has like a, a, a stack of like supplements for you know boosting immunity and all that stuff like that. And mm. he's like, you know, he's he's marketing it and selling it on on Facebook ads right now. <laughs> Yeah. Lane. yeah, Lane's well, going I mean, hard right now on some of these guys and like some of the diet plans out there that are trying to say that theirs is best for, you know, preventing coronavirus and all this kind of stuff. So <laughs> he's going hard on all, all these guys. Well, hey, let's let's okay. I mean, I get it. I get what yeah, he's doing. I get but what he's isn't, doing. Isn't, isn't Lane doing the same thing, though? Isn't uh, yeah, he, isn't he, totally. You know, he's like, oh, you know, he's kind of doing the same thing, getting attention from this whole thing. I mean, I that's mean, how every, everybody is. Yeah, and, dude, that's all. And that's I think a, a lot of people are scrambling. A lot of people, um, I mean, for the most part, I think most businesses uh, over the last week and a half or so have felt a screeching halt of spending. Unless you are uh, Charmin or Cottonelle, yes. you <laughs> have probably felt um, somewhat of a, a, a halt in sales because people are just holding on to their money. Uh, and so... You know, you're getting, you're starting to get people. You know, I was talking to Jason Phillips this morning, though. You know what he told me? Uh, Facebook ad ads are at the lowest price ever. I forgot to tell you this, Doug. Uh, I was, yeah. I, I, we got, I didn't even know this. I guess that uh, because of a lot of like the shysters and everybody that's um, on Facebook, every, they're holding on to their money, afraid to even spend it or invest it on ads. And because of that, uh, uh, ads per click right now on Facebook are cheaper than they've ever been. Yeah, well, I wonder if they're they're not converting like they normally are. Uh, well, yeah, uh, right. That's that's what I mean. That's exactly if if you're just running, people aren't buying all the normal bullshit, right? Nobody's nobody's buying the fucking, you know, jaws are size right now. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. just like oh, you're, amongst all this, like you're not like, hey, I got to work on that jawline. You know what I'm saying? That's not yeah. with no one's going and buying that off of Facebook ads right now. Why mm. you're wondering if you're going to get a paycheck in two weeks? Maybe yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think that that that's probably all. I just a lot of people left uh, advertising. I think, and so Facebook uh, dropped some of their ad uh, ad rates. 
Well, dude, did you guys, uh, not everybody is getting the memo. Did you guys see the videos from uh, the, the, South Florida? Yes, the beaches and stuff. Oh, what? It's, hey, that's, that's so maddening. It's some damn millennials. <laughs> you know, and we all, sound like and, a bunch of boomers, hey, dude, but and, it's like, come and on. All, and all you millennials that are listening, fucking call your friends. What's up, dude? Getting yeah. out, going out on the beach and stuff like that. Stop come on. Stop being assholes. <laughs> oh, my God. it's the, the beaches are packed, and people are partying. These kids are partying. The worst state, I'm going to tell you something right now, the worst state in in the, in America for a coronavirus outbreak is Florida. Because the they temperature, the right? Population. <laughs> yeah, old, old temperature, right? Yeah, dude. Oh, no, I'm just saying, just well, old people. Right, that's they why have, everybody goes to retire. They have more old people in Florida than any other state. If there's a coronavirus outbreak over there, oh, my gosh, they're fucked. Yeah. And you've got all these kids on the beach. You know, And spring break is not like, you know, we're just going to go to the beach. These kids are freaking, uh, you know. Oh, they're drinking. They're, they're blacking kissing out. Each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now the leading oh, now the leading order right now is this, right? If I if I remember reading it correctly, it goes New York, Seattle, and then us. Is that right? Oh, for uh, for total cases. Yeah, total cases. Total cases. I I believe that New York is number one right now. Seattle. Washington. Now here's 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 some. So uh, I, I heard some uh, stats on this. So if you look at the the death rate or the percentage, the ratio from. Uh, Seattle in comparison to New York, it's extremely higher. So uh, Seattle has way more deaths than New York, and New York actually has more uh, more people that have caught the virus. Yeah. And somebody told me, I don't know if this is true, this is hearsay for me, so you have to fact check me, uh, is that part of the reason why Seattle is so high is because it went through an, uh, a retirement home. Yes. Mm. So is that true? Yeah, yeah, it got it went through retirement. That just goes to show you how some of these, a lot of these numbers can be so skewed. Oh, I mean, dude, that that, yeah. that makes a huge difference. If if a virus drops into a city and it comes and it get, it hits somebody who's twenty five or thirty, and we know already the percentages and how, uh, you know how bad it is or detrimental to somebody that age, versus uh, the first person to get it in another city and they're in a retirement home around other 60, 70, 80 year olds. Yeah. I mean, of course, the, the death percentage is going to be extremely higher in that town than somewhere else. Well, the problem is this. The problem is that the information that they're getting is that if, if you're young, you barely feel any symptoms or that some people don't get any symptoms. Now, that may be that the second part may be true, but the majority of people who get uh, the coronavirus, they might not have to get hospitalized, but you're on your ass. You're fucking out. So if you're a 20 something year old kid and you think it's no big deal, it's like. You know, it's like having the flu, like you're fucked for a good two weeks where you have a fever, mm -hmm. 102, 103. Like if you've ever had an actual flu virus, that's that's not fun. You don't want that. So they think it's like whatever, no big deal. But, uh, you know, I have a cousin in Italy who whose friend is in their 20s and had it. And they're like, yeah, I didn't go to the hospital, but it wasn't a freaking cakewalk. He's like, it's the sickest he'd ever been in his life. He was at home uh, just in bed for two weeks with a fever and a couldn't sleep because he was coughing his ass off. So he's like, yeah, sure, I'd have to go to the hospital, but it wasn't like super awesome fun. But that was the thing that I was wondering is, that, you know, at one point, uh, you know, if, if we stayed locked down, at what point do people start looting and doing weird shit? Hmm. Like, are, are, You know what? That's a good question, but you know what? In, in, uh, in, in countries like Italy, and, you know, I don't know, it's a different culture. People are banding together and, and working together. People are home. So, you know, people are less likely to break into a house that that's a good point. somebody's home. And let's also not forget this. Like, America's got the Second Amendment. We're the most armed country in the world. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't think it would be a good idea for people to, to try to loot people's houses <laughs> while they're home yeah. right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> might, not, might not be a great idea. It not work out so well for you. Yeah. <sighs> did, you guys, uh, did you guys hear about the, the, that they found a, a Japanese uh, um, flu drug? Uh, seems to be very effective at fighting uh, the coronavirus. Well, see, I don't know what to believe with all these. I keep hearing I, every day. I hear a different uh, drug that they're testing right now, or that, a vaccine somewhere that they're coming out with. The, the, the last we were talking about, I think it was the arthritis drug that was supposed to be oh, helping. Right. And I know well, up in Washington, there there's a couple human trials going on right now where somebody's there's already been like thirty or sixty patients that have taken uh, uh, their first round of injections. So. Cool. Well, there's a there's a um uh, a, a antiviral flu drug uh, from Japan called uh, favipiravir. Favipiravir, I think it's called. 
Um, and uh, it's for the flu, but they did a trial in Shenzhen. So they had a bunch of people with coronavirus there, and they gave uh, half of them this drug, the other half of them they left, whatever. And they got off, they got out of the virus, or at least they, they, they turned negative for the virus after four days hmm. uh, compared to 11 days for the people who do, didn't get the drug. So this wow. is making well, big that's news. That's promising. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, because it's a treatment. You know what I mean? It's not just a, like a vaccine. Although the vaccine is uh, phase one under trial. Did you guys hear? Is that what you were talking about, Adam? Yeah, I yeah. think I think so. Right? It's it's up in Washington right now, and they've already done it on I think like sixty patients. Is that right? I think I read. That. Yeah, it's, it, there's it's at a Kaiser, and they're <laughs> they're they're testing it out, and it's like the fastest. Uh, this will be the fastest vaccine to 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 move through the process ever. In history, they're not even doing animal trials. They're going straight to humans. Yeah, yeah, no, wow. they, they already did the shots on some of them. I think. I think that, that we. I think it still is going to take time, though, right? I thought I heard that the the series of shots are, are over the course of a few weeks. Yeah, a few if, weeks I, if I read least, that uh, right, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it would take like a. It would take like a year uh, or a year and a half. But R dude, that's like ten years faster uh, than it normally takes, which is insane. But I think it's. I mean, that's. You know, God bless the people volunteering for that, dude. That's there's no trials. Here you go, give yeah. me a shot, see what yeah, happens. Yeah. I mean, that, but still, we have to, it's going to take that because I know that's that's the other big concern, right? Is that, um, you know, even if we 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 slow things down right now, that if we don't have a vaccine for it, or we don't know for sure if the vaccine works until six months or a year or whatever, that by winter next winter, uh, this will still be coming back around anyway. So. Um, yeah. it's, uh, we, we may slow it down now, but it's kind of inevitable that we, it, you know, the rumor is that when people start to go back to their normal lives, we'll see a spike again. That's what I've heard. Yeah. We I, may be in a situation where we're going to just have to say, okay, well, we can't keep everything shut down forever. And enough people have had it now where let's just go out in the real world and, 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 you know, kind of see what happens. I mean, we've had outbreaks in the past, uh, you know, terrible ones. And you know we end up building immunities. Uh, so well now we, we're sending out. We're sending. I know that one is going up to New York. I don't. I think the last con uh, press conference I heard they didn't say where the second one's going. I would assume it's going up towards Washington or the Bay Area since those are the two highest on the uh, West Coast. Uh, there, I guess there's two uh, huge cruise liners. That's like like oh, really? basically hospitals on water. That's all yeah. they are. Is like. Uh, I forget the names of the two boats, but they're just massive. Mercy and uh, I forget what the yeah, other yeah, something was, like yeah. that. And they're they're two massive cruise ships that just are basically hospital rooms. And really? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. I, I didn't even know we had this. Uh, and and, and, and well, what do they do? They sh they ship you out there if you're sick. So basically, well, no, I think they're, treatment. they're yeah. One of them's going up to New York, right? So to, to help support New York for the overflow in the hospitals. So, and, oh. then, and then the other one is going to go up, I'm assuming it's going to go to Washington or to the Bay Area, since those are the two highest areas on the West Coast. Wow, that's really cool. I know, right? I didn't yeah. even know we had that. So there's some, uh, there's, and I know that they're doing some other things too with opening up facilities. I mean, that's the biggest concern right now is that most hospitals are only equipped with about 40, uh, what are they, respirators, right? That they, uh, and that's because and most people that have the coronavirus need to be put on that. Well, the, or the real critically, the real critical yeah, the ones critical either. ones, right? At least so, yeah. uh, you know, so, so if you get you know over and at, at all at any times during a, a normal flu season, uh, we we maybe use twelve to fifteen at a time in a hospital ever at the worst time. So most hospitals are over equipped for that until this came around, and that's where all this panic is happening. Is you know you've had some of these hospitals hit with. 45 or 50 people coming in and it's like my buddy just told me a story uh so um my best friend's wife is a respiratory therapist and so she's obviously on the front line of all this and they had their first death in the hospital uh today and it was a 70 year old lady and they didn't have enough uh respirators for everybody and she chose to not use it and give it to somebody young and oh, oh i know wow. right uh, that's heartbreaking oh. crazy right what um, a hero i know though right that's what i, I just I, it, it's sad but what an amazing story at the same time too right definitely yeah you so. know it's 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 crazy what, what it, it, the human spirit never ceases to amaze me you know when we have the hardest most difficult things that happen it just opens up opportunities for 
just acts of, uh, of, of just selfless courage. Like, you know, like that, like the lady you just said, you know, right. that she's there dying and she says, give it to somebody else. You know, I, I, I mean, uh, incredible. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. Uh, so, hey, hey, I want to ask you guys, what are you guys doing to, to, to pass the time right now? Because <laughs> I know you're not. I know you're not leaving the house right now. The well, we, 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 we're staying busy, dude. Yeah, we worked out. Uh, we, we actually just worked out a little bit. Uh, Justin and I did. D Doug's been doing a lot of work, uh, business work, uh, trying to get all – I mean, obviously with – this is a challenge with us having to re record remotely and, and piece uh, episodes together and stuff like that. So he's been kind of working around the clock on stuff like that. I, I mean, I, I've been talking to all of our staff uh, independently – um, and still holding like our normal meetings and, and partnership stuff. And, you know, at first I was really, uh, I was really scared. I mean, I told, uh, I, I kind of told everybody that, um, I don't know what to expect, uh, with all of our partners. Obviously a, a big part of our business now is our, our partnerships that we have and sponsors. And, uh, one of my big concerns was obviously if they all take a massive hit and they can't afford to pay for advertising and, you know, that happens to multiple companies, we could suffer big time. And so we've been trying to just uh, be smart and proactive on on things that we can do to help support them. And uh, But the consensus right now is uh, is not that at all. And I, I, I don't know if you saw the post I just did maybe 15, 20 minutes ago before we got on here. Just uh, it was I'm just so grateful for uh, the partners that we've chose to work with mm -hmm. because like more than <laughs> literally almost all of them are direct to consumer uh, brands and yeah. you know a majority of their client only a few of our partners have some brick and mortar uh, facilities most of them have been uh, direct to consumer businesses and are doing phenomenal supporting people right now I mean you go into a grocery store right now you are not getting a bag of chicken you are not going to get any ground beef or steaks it's just there's no there's no meat there's no vegetables so you know, uh, our our partners are are doing a really good job of being able to. So they're all seeing a, a tremendous uh, spike in uh, traffic right now, and are shipping out to all these people, which I think is freaking phenomenal. Dude, I, I, if you're a health fanatic, I'll tell you what. If you're like a health and fitness fanatic, you're at home. Uh, like, have fun optimizing your environment right now. No joke. Like, uh, make your your home. Uh, as awesome as you possibly can. Like, uh, I was talking to my uh, one of my other cousins who is very hard headed, and I've been forever been trying to talk him into um, getting the chili pad. My brother's been talking him into it as well. I was like, you got to get it. So awesome. Well, now he's stuck at home. He's stuck at home. He can't go anywhere. So of course, now he's getting himself. Did I tell you? Pad. Did I yeah. did I tell you? Well, fucking Doug. So Doug ruined this for me. Speaking of the chili pad, he just reminded me of that. So. Uh, we don't have them yet at the Tahoe house until now, right? I'm ordered. I ordered uh, last night. So we, so when we, when we got this place, we got uh, the, it, it came with all these uh, bed heaters, and I was like super pumped. To, I, I keep my, you know me, like I like the room freezing, so my room's like ice cold. And I had went in there and I turned like the the you know bed warmer sheets on, so it's like cranked all the way up, and I was gonna crawl into it. And uh, Doug, Doug's room was cold, and he was like, "Oh, you know, I think I'm gonna turn the fireplace on." I'm like, "Doug, just turn on your your heater blanket." He's like, "You think that's really good for you, the EMF all night long?" <laughs> <laughs> and I and so I was like, "Fuck, Doug!" And I went to bed, right? And I'm laying there all night long. All I'm thinking about is fucking like, I, am I feel <laughs> am I feeling EMF running through my body right now? I was, I was so pissed, dude. I was like, "Way to ruin that shit for me right yeah. now." I wasn't even on my radar that I cared about I can that. Sense We're, it right now. Yeah. It's, it's oh, penetrating I, me. I got terrible sleep because yeah. all I was thinking about was EMF running through my body, <laughs> and every time I moved and I felt like an electric shock or something, I'm like, oh my oh. god, I'm like fucking Doug. Oh, just the, killing your oh yeah, just pretty, killing really, dude. Killing, killing it from, your sperm. Oh, your, dude, your, your first thing in the morning, yeah. I'm up ordering a chili pad over here. I'm like, this guy just ruined this for me. So yeah, that's funny. Yeah, well, I mean, if the, the audience probably confused now. So the the chili pad is is water. It goes through the pad, so it's not. Yes. Uh, it, no EMF. It, not, yeah, yeah, there's no EMF coming through the pad. The, the 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 unit itself that is plugged into the wall is away from you, so you're not sleeping on an electric uh, device. But yeah, my cousin now he's like optimizing his whole house, so he's got <laughs> you know he's got it's exercise bands, everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. he's got bands now set up. He's got you know you know he's, 
He's all set up with that with his chili pad yeah. so he can sleep all perfect. He's got the dude. Why Himalayas. not? I mean, think about how good you feel when you're like super refreshed at like the best night's sleep ever. Like I, I feel like if you're not getting the best night's sleep ever, all these different things that we've come across, like you got to try it at least and see if it makes any kind of a difference. I mean, it'll affect the way that you work, the way you interact with people, your family. It's crazy when you get a good night's sleep. No, every, oh, dude, everybody, it, what, everybody, what, what, everybody like right I've now, got on this, dude. Everybody I've got on this is uh absolutely rants and raves about it once you once you do that and you see it was it reminds me of and i think i've i don't think i've shared this in the podcast i know i've shared this with you guys off air when, when i was a kid right uh we had like the the hand-me-down bed like it was like literally like a taco like because it's been like, so, cause, cause, like so many generations had fucking slept That's, on it uh, you know? racist, those are the yeah. best you just like <laughs> rolled to the middle no, every just, time at night you know and for my my entire <laughs> life as a kid i just assumed that you know I, I i like everybody just is restless through the night i didn't know that like you just fall asleep and you sleep i literally i literally as a kid believed this because like, my whole life growing up i just tossed and turned uh forever and it wasn't until I, I got like a really nice mattress. I had the like greatest night's sleep. I was like, oh my god! So my point of bringing that up is that that's the experience I get when I get like a client or a friend and I introduce them to a chili pad. Is they just like, oh my god! I didn't yeah. I didn't realize I wasn't sleeping great until right. I actually managed my temperature it all stays night. Stays at the perfect temperature all <laughs> yeah, night. Dude. It's, it Bro, trips you out. Do you know how many of your your purchasing habits, Adam, are because of your childhood traumas? You, have <laughs> you keep your you keep your AC Baby on twenty four hours a day. Fucking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because oh, you guys never had AC, and yeah. then because you slept on a taco bed. <laughs> yeah, you know? I got, I got a million bed. dollar mattress and chili pad pad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, didn't you say it. that was the biggest? Didn't you? I think you told me that once that that was like the first. That was the first yeah. big purchase. Did I ever this did. whole thing hysteria bring back flashbacks? Remember, like, because uh, you not having toilet paper was your oh, yeah. personal fear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right? it. That's oh it. my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's god. A, that, why do you think I keep throwing like all the memes out about that? It's like it's, no it, it pisses me off, like seeing all these people like that because I actually feel threatened there a little bit. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I'm normally st- what? You, hey, hey, you know what? How dare though? you hoard on my stash? I'm always stocked up for months, bro. I'm yeah. always stocked up for months. So that's like in bro. this case, I, when everybody was racing there, I was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's yeah. like an M Night Shyamalan movie. Where, like, <laughs> yeah. like that, that's the twist. Everybody's making fun of you, oh Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Toilet yeah. paper yeah. as a gift, and then right. all of a sudden there's a toilet paper shortage. And it's like, oh shit! Yeah. It was that all along. Uh, he knew it the whole time. It's really ironic. It is really ironic, though. That that's the thing that everybody is buying. I just I find that really uh, funny. Like of all the things, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, if, if everybody was just normal about it, there would be no, there it wouldn't be sold out. No. If everybody just bought their toilet paper every time they go to the grocery store between now and whenever the fuck this thing ends, yeah, we'd all be fine. There's no reason why there should be a shortage of toilet paper because there's no reason why all of a sudden we should be shitting more as Americans than what yeah. we were just fucking. It's not a fucking diarrhea virus. If it was a diarrhea <laughs> virus, this right. would make total sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing to do then with I'm that. I'm on board 100%. <laughs> yeah. So memes are like by far the most powerful uh, form of communication today. They spread so quickly and they're doing it. Whoever makes these memes is doing such a phenomenal job at keeping people's stress levels low. I read one today that I thought was hilarious. It said, um, I used to I used to cough to hide my fart, but, mm-hmm. but now I fart to hide my cough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. My favorite one was the truth. I, the, did you see the the one I shared, the, the toilet paper all over the house? Somebody, oh, yeah, yeah some, you, you didn't see that one? I, sh- I thought I sent it over to the uh, to the ma- the main thread, too. Yeah, somebody had TP'd this house. Yeah, somebody had TP'd a house. It says, like on Zillow. Na- it, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It says, neighbor's house got TP'd last night, and now it's listed on Zillow for $12.5 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, stupid. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. I love oh, it. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing some, you know, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm self-quarantined and, uh, you know, because I'm sick, but also because, you know, the whole deal or whatever. I'm just, I'm reading a lot of weird stuff and Mm -hmm. I came across something really interesting, a a weird fact. I know Justin will probably appreciate this. He likes these weird things. I got one for you. you Did you know that, okay, at the time of the dinosaurs, okay, so let me, let me back up a little bit. Hmm. Scientists uh, studied fossils of mollusk shells. So these are shells Mm -hmm. from ancient like snails Mm -hmm. and these, these ancient mollusks, the way that they grow is they 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 lay down uh, a daily growth ring, so it literally matches the day. So they could tell by these growth rings uh, how many days in the year they were, how long the the days were back then. That's so like trees this. too, right? 
uh, tree. Yeah, I think trees something different, right? So they studied these and they fa- they calculated that uh, back about four point five or, or excuse me, not four point five, but anyway, long time ago when there was dinos- dinosaurs around, um, that days were shorter. And there were 372 uh, days in a year rather than 365. How the fuck? So, do, how do we come mm-hmm. up with something like that? How is it off of looking at a shell? We put this together? Yes. That's that's what they said. They, so what they said is they said Earth it's, turned faster at the end of the time of the dinosaurs it than faster. it does today. So it's still it in wrote, the same uh, distance in orbit? It, it just because the Earth was rotating a little faster. Oh. And because it was rotating faster, that added extra days to the year before it made a full you know rotation around the sun or whatever so or, or whatever so 300 there's 372 days in the year versus 365 isn't that weird that so would this weird. explain why we didn't actually live for that many years before but maybe it was maybe the years were a lot longer yeah. so when we, yeah. we we speculate that what they say what did hundreds or thousands of years ago that humans didn't live longer than about 45 years old maybe that 45 is more like our 95 yeah, no, I was back in the dinosaur. That's way before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, I, dude. I don't know. I don't know if I could. I, whenever I hear science like that, I have such a hard time like grasping how how can we be so certain off of off of a some rings from a from a shell? That's so weird to me. Yeah, I know. That's funny. It is. That's just weird to me that we we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just try and find some common ground of what you see in nature right now, and then you try and like create this. You know, it doesn't always work out like that. I don't know. But. I feel like the same people that that believe in that though are the same people that scoff at like religions and believing in some god that we can't see. It's like, how is that any crazier? I mean, or not as crazy? Well, history, yeah. It's just like it's a lot of it's up for interpretation. You know, based <laughs> off of what evidence you see and the evidence. You know how it goes in trial and court with like. A murder case yeah, yeah how much like you have all the evidence but now how do you create the story of what actually happened right you have yeah, to figure at, it out yeah at some point you just have to say okay you have to believe, believe in the that. narrative yeah yeah 100. yeah exactly 100 or i don't right, right but i mean you know the, the rotation of the earth uh, it does change right because of the way that the earth travels through space and you know uh, how close we are to the sun that for sure changes which is why our, our, our you know there's a wobble to the earth so the climate mm-hmm. changes over time we had We've had ice ages and stuff, so it's not hard to believe that you know days were a half hour shorter. You know, instead of you know twenty four hours, there were you know twenty three and a half hours yeah. before or whatever. Hey, so, I mean, I, I've noticed I've been on my phone a lot more though, like uh, trying to handle things and like emails and whatnot. And my and so I've I've been trying my best to put my glasses on, and I was remembering like. When I didn't have prescription glasses, like it was such a problem for me squinting wise and like I I wouldn't get really bad headaches. But then, you know, later on, I I realized I was in front of a screen for long enough. I would get really bad headaches uh, just looking at the screen. And uh, so, you know, it was more than just like, I don't know if it's a stigmatism or if it's just that I'm like nearsighted or whatever. But uh, like I had to add in that blue blocking element to it. And it's just been like no more strain, no more, uh, you know, headaches uh, as a result of that. So that was like a huge thing for me. Oh yeah. So, uh, so to avoid headaches, you've been wearing the blue, the, the, the Felix Grays more often. Yeah. I've been wearing those in combination with the prescription. So like, as I'm yeah. reading things on, yeah. Cause I'm freaking blind, dude. I'm I well, seriously. Hey, well speaking since we're, since Justin's picking on himself, I'm going to pile on him while he's going anyways, this guy, um, sweet. This has a, a he has a, uh, a worse cheese addiction than like we've talked about. <laughs> we weren't going to talk about this. No, man. I am talking about this, dude, because you have it, to talk about this. I do have to talk about this. This is, uh, he's on another level than I actually thought. I know we tease him on the show. A lot dude, of that's exaggerated. It's only because of circumstances. No, no, no. Yeah, Listen yeah. to this, Sal. Okay. So we, we go to the, we go to the grocery store yesterday <clears throat> and we kind of like, we divide and conquer it. Like there's nothing. So you were just like, what, you know, you're, I think each of us are going down the aisle, like trying to grab and put stuff together or whatever. And, uh, of course, Justin, you know, grabs cheese, you know, uh, I expect that, right? There wasn't even any blocks though. There was just like all these like random Dude. little like versions of it all over the place. There's like, literally, there's literally, uh, 13 different types of cheeses in our refrigerator right now. <laughs> and no, there he, is, there's he buys, he buys, I didn't even know they make these. Do you yeah. know that you remember the, you know, the, uh, the chocolate mints, uh, is it Andy's? I think the chocolate mint brand that's, I think oh, it's, yeah. okay. You know, do you know they make bags of cheese like that? They're like cracker what? barrel, like little, uh, that they, you package like, like they're slices indi- of it. Yes. They're like individual little things and this guy eats them like people like fat people eat andy's candy bro 
Listen, oh. he sits down oh. like you know, like you, you know, what I'm saying, like your your cousin that freaking eats a pound of chocolate. That person, he sits yeah. down with like these handfuls of these cheese wrappers and just eats them like Andy's Andy's mints. Yeah. Oh my god. You know, it's, <laughs> good. what do, what do they say about addictions? Like, you know, your friends they just see the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like hey, I feel like he relieved a ton of it or, or, or no, I was looking revealed, for meat. He revealed a ton yeah. of it this weekend, dude. No, I was looking for meat and and uh, listen, there was like no ground meat. <laughs> There's no like jerky or anything like so I had to grab like what I could and that's cheese. Dude, what do you guys? It what makes do you guys me feel good it? and uh, it helps me. And in times of peril, we're, we're not at. The, we're probably. Well, we're not that bad though either, right? I wouldn't say we're. Doug made us. Uh, Doug made us. Uh, we got the air fryer up here, and Doug made some incredible. Uh, you know, frozen green beans because you can't get any fresh vegetables because <laughs> everybody ransacked it. So he made. He did make. Uh, made us some uh, air fried green beans, which were phenomenal. We had a bowl of that. Uh, the place right here at, our, at the um, so the <clears throat> the bar and grill that's inside our our community yeah. center thing or whatever, uh, they're actually encouraging people not to come to the restaurant and eat there, and so they're actually doing a a dine out thing where oh cool yeah we just called down there and we so yesterday I had mahi tacos I think uh, just uh, Justin and Doug had um, like a chicken sandwich or something yeah and we're gonna order from there next right now we'll order from there so we're trying to you get know, a salad we're we have, when we got some I mean there really wasn't anything to put together I think we had a quesadilla the first night we got here I think that we yeah. of course we had cheese right we have cheese <laughs> yeah. we're having a lot of cheese well that's dishes what started right it right there that's <laughs> like uh how am I gonna get rid of all this cheese now? I made them one of my uh, uh, childhood white trash uh, meals that I love so yeah, much. Yeah, what, what do you call I, that? I, by the I way? introduced them to something both yeah. of them have never had before. It's pretty amazing. I, I actually, what is it? I don't know if I want to share with you. I kind of want to. I want to surprise you. I think actually. <laughs> I want to make you. Would, would no, I be able to tell him? Uh, no, oh, you wouldn't. Oh, it's cream yeah. cheese. You yeah. can't eat it. Oh, you can't eat it. So okay, yeah. I guess he I can't. He slathers tell you. cream cheese over these like real thin bread sticks. No, it's not supposed to be thin. They're supposed to be the thick ones. We had oh. to we had to de deal with what we had. You know the 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 hard uh, bread sticks. What do they call? I don't know what you call them. Is there is there an Italian name for it? Is it Doug breadstick. No, shut yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, bread no, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Is it yeah. just a bread? Okay, so like a, the 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 big round bread sticks. You take those and you get some of the and the 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 not the creamy but the kind of whipped uh, cottage cheese. Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Sorry, cream cheese. Yeah. And you you smear it all over this bread stick, and then you, <laughs> yeah, you then you wrap very, you wrap salami around it, is, <laughs> and then you eat it. It's amazing. Oh, the, wow, the worst dude. part was Adam watching me eat it. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> this is awkward. So, yeah, it was. You know, you know what they do in, in Italy? They use the breadstick and then they put like uh, like prosciutto around it with like they sprinkle Parmesan. So you literally made a gangster version of that. Oh, dude, it's the white trash version. It is. Of it it anyway. is. It was one. That's a, that was like one of the go to meals as a kid. I remember. You <laughs> I was know, like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember oh. being a kid, like yeah. crying for food. Mom, Mom, we need some food, and her like going to. The, yeah, I like think you got she, nothing in the. In as the far cupboards. as I know, she invented it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen any other kid <laughs> get served it. I don't know. I don't know anybody else that's had it before. But I tell you what, though, was it good? Uh, yeah, it was good. That yeah, was it, it kind of good, or was it like no? Real? It was good, dude. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was hey, definitely hey, white trashy. What did you think, Doug? Did you I liked did it, but I felt my yeah. heart getting clogged up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Adam, did yeah. you ever eat cereal with water? Because you guys didn't have milk. Or anything? Oh, of course I did. Oh, wow. oh, of course I had to, dude. Oh, yeah, oh. no, that's a, for sure. You know, or no. you know, so you you want to know something? You want to talk about like childhood stuff? Like we, we talk about my spending because of that. So I have a thing at, at my at my house, right? Katrina always gets mad at me. Like if something if something hits the date, it's it's trash. I throw it away. Right. Like, like I there is one in one day beyond. I'm freaking out. Like so. I told you guys my whole thing. And she grew she grew up where yo you just tear the mold off. We just eat that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And I'm so because I I had that uh, all the time. And that was I've been sick before from eating something that was for sure yes. expired. And I'm, I'm so super paranoid on something like that. Even if it's some a meal she just made, if it sat in the refrigerator for like yeah. two days, um, that's too I much. I drank like two two month old milk at my parents' house, and then forever it was just like. Like it, and I know that whatever is presented in front of me, I'm like, this is past expiration date. That's just how they roll. <laughs> they, they don't care. It's like, I'm like, look, it's written on the box here. You're not supposed to eat this anymore. It's yeah. done. <laughs> oh, so oh, angry. That's hilarious. Man, I miss you guys. Yeah, we miss you yeah, too, man. man. But uh, at least we, I'm so glad that we were able to uh, make it work like this. So at least we can uh, communicate. It was uh, it's a lot better not having you at all. So For yeah. sure. So yeah, yeah good, good deal, boys. Our first question is from CD Champ Seventeen. 
What are rest pause sets and how can they be used in a workout? Who's uh, who's big on rest pause sets recently? Those are kind of came back. Someone was talking about it. Who was um, it? I, Lane mm. Lane was just training him, training them with uh, Holly. I, I saw on his Instagram. Just to well, I mean, they've been around for a long time. But oh I, yeah, no, of course. I feel like somebody was making a deal about it that we interviewed recently. Uh, I can't remember. Ben Pollock uses them a lot. Uh, I don't know how shallow how often I see shallow use them, but oh, you know who it was? Uh, remember the dude we? Inter- oh, I can't remember his name. Shaved head, like overly jacked. Right. You, know, kind of like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Mountain Dog. Was it Mountain Dog? Either Mountain Dog or uh, yeah, the other like well scientist. People though. are talking about rest pause sets now more than I've heard in a long time. But they've been they've been around for a very very long time. Long time. Uh, yeah, bodybuilders have used rest pause sets since uh, geez, since the 70s maybe or 80s. So essentially what they are is you, uh, rather than, so typically a, a normal workout set looks like this, right? You do you do your 10 reps, then you rest for one to three minutes, then you do another 10, you know, set of 10 reps and, and so on. What a rest pause set looks like is you do 10 reps, then you wait maybe 15, 20 seconds, then you do as many as you can again, then you wait another 15, 20 seconds, then you do as many as you can again, and then you're done. Something along those lines. It's like a cluster set. Kind of like a cluster set, exactly. Mm, yeah. Um, do they have value? Yeah. There, it's an it's an advanced intensity building technique. It's a way to uh, squeeze more volume and work um, and intensity um, into your workout in a shorter period of time. In a shorter period of time, it's not the be all end all. So it's not like you know do those and then that's it. You all, you just do those and you get all the results you ever wanted. But um, especially if you're advanced, and I say advanced because if you're not advanced, if you've been working out for less than two or three years consistently, um, then your best bet is to stick to the basics. Get good at the basics. Mm-hmm. Get good at your form. Get good at your traditional sets. Get good at your controlled negatives, the squeeze, the feel. Focus on that. That's where you're going to get the most results. But after you're, you've been training for a while and you've been doing it consistently and you know what you're doing and your form is great and you've got great connection – then you can start to implement uh, different types of techniques. Mm-hmm. And what I would do with something like this is I would implement this in phases. Um, and I would do it for a phase of one to three weeks. So I'd say to myself, okay, for the next three weeks, I'm going to make sure my sleep is good, my nutrition is good. I've been working out for a while. Um, I'm going to use rest pause sets for uh, my chest or maybe just for an exercise. I'm going to do it just for squats. Um, and that's it, and take it from there. I, I like them for like uh, isolation exercises. Like I like it for arms. It's a cool thing to do. Some shoulder stuff. I like to do it with shoulders. Get a really good pump, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great way to chase a pump. Um, you know, I, whenever we get questions that are like specific to uh, tools uh, like this in training, it just reminds me of like training uh, for a sport in any sport. Uh, every sport has like its its foundational movements or things that you should get really really good at. Uh, before you try something fancy, you know, and and I was, I relate to basketball the most because what I played the most, and I think of like how important the fundamentals of learning to dribble the basketball with your right hand, learning to dribble the basketball with your left hand, rocker step, jab step, jump stop, like you know, bounce pass. These are all like fundamental things that mm-hmm. you as when you're when you're learning to play the game. I don't know any of those backboard things. shots. <laughs> yeah, 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 you you just you John drill wooden style. You drill these home like crazy. And you know every every great player ever uh, has mastered those, and then as they've progressed and they've been doing it for years, they add, they add the between the legs crossover, the behind the back pass, the the dunk. Like these are all things that are also extremely valuable and uh, make you great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't you you don't need that necessarily at the beginning to get good at the game right you know what it reminds me Wayne for your uh, spoiler on a car analogy cuz that that would go perfect here yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It's totally yeah. you know what it reminds me of so in in uh, brazilian jiu jitsu um, has become very very popular over the last uh, you know few decades i mean when it first uh, entered into the the fray it was uh, the, the first ultimate fighting championship and hoist gracie comes out skinny brazilian dude doesn't look like he could beat up anybody. And he beats everybody, including Ken Shamrock, who looked like a cartoon character yeah, uh, super at the time. Jack. Chokes him out, right? So everybody's like, oh my God, I got to learn this this new martial arts. Since then, it's changed uh, and, and, and been modified so much. There's so many of these high-tech, uh, high, highly technical moves and spin moves and rolling off of your, 
your back and, you know, things like the Barimbolo and, uh, you know, uh, 50-50, all these different positions. And what's happened with a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, they go right into these these very technical moves. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the, the, the real champions are saying, you need to focus on the basics. And a great example of that would be like uh, Hicks and Gracie's son. His son competes in these tournaments against high-level black belts who are doing all these flashy moves and literally will beat them with the most basic rudimentary jiu-jitsu, but so perfect. It's the mm. basics mm -hmm. that do most of everything. And it's true for any sport. It's true for any endeavor. It's true for business. It's true for being a good personal trainer. And it's true for your workouts. There's the fundamentals that will give you 95% of your results. Then there's all the other stuff that'll squeeze out that extra 5%. Yeah. If you're not good at the fundamentals, you're, it's almost wasting your time. Not only that, it's stuff. fun. You know, like that's a, the, the appeal of it is, wow, this is like new, it's exciting, it's it's like producing something, it's fun. But again, it's not part of like the meat and potatoes of what you need to focus on the you know for the rest of the workout. Well, you got to be careful. It can become very detrimental for people chasing all the flashy ideas because then you're you're chasing all these things that are cool that you heard about that somebody used clickbait to get your attention of try this new thing and you're doing all those things and you're not getting the time under practicing the stuff that really like you said is the ninety five percent. So. It can really kill your gains by chasing all that. I think that's when we talk about uh, topics like this. I, we're, I think we're always trying to think about the the mm -hmm. average person. Like I'm, there's always a caveat. Yeah, I know. I know there's some asshole who's listening right now. Like what, would what, love to argue like how incredible it, it's been for that person, that single person who's been training for 15 years of their life, and how valuable it's been of a tool for them. But that, that's not who I think we're trying to communicate to. I think we're trying to communicate to the average person who struggles just to be consistent for two years in a row of training. I mean, that's that would be mm -hmm. a year in a row of training would be a fucking accomplishment in itself. So if you're that person and, you know, you haven't been squatting and deadlifting, overhead pressing and and really good at those movements uh, for a long time, then you're going to get so much more value in and spending more time uh, working towards that than trying all these right. different variables. Yeah, I would put I would put, uh, you know, rest pause sets up there with forced reps uh, force negatives or negative reps, partial drop, reps, drop sets, drop sets, you know, stuff like that. Um, and we put them in some of our programs. They tend to be a phase, um, and they tend to be later on in the program when somebody's already done six to eight weeks of, of training consistently in one of our programs, and we know it's done really well. So there's definitely value to rest pause sets. Um, but if you're not advanced or you don't have a lot of consistency under your belt, I would stay away from them. Now, if you are consistent. You've been training for a while. Now there's lots of value. Give it a shot. Try them out because you know your body. You know how you move. You already know the fundamentals. You've been doing them for a while. Now a technique like rest pause sets um, can provide you value. So it, now, and again, uh, you know, the second part of the question is how do I use this in a workout? Okay, here's one of the big mistakes you can make if you're advanced and rest pause sets work for you. You do them in all the whole workout. Now every exercise, every set, like I'm going to do rest pause sets throughout the whole workout. Way too much for most people. Pick one exercise or one body part, and that one body part, typically I wouldn't do rest pause sets for more than maybe two or three sets uh, in that entire workout because it is very, very intense. So it's not something you apply to the whole workout. It's something you throw in as an extra set to maybe three sets uh, for a particular body part or exercise. Next question is from Frines de Mamos. How would you go about curing a sugar addiction? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Whoa. So there's... Two parts to this. Um, one part is the physiological um, response that you have to sugar. The And sugar is part of the sugar-salt-fat mix that creates hyperpalatability. Um, there's a lot of things that create hyperpalatability. You know, and that refers to the just the hedonistic value of food, the pleasure of eating food. And sugar is a part of that, right? So the physiological effects are you eat it, you enjoy it. Uh, makes you feel good, um, probably causes you to want more, just like anything you enjoy. By the way, this applies to anything that you have a lot of enjoyment over. It could be sex, it could be gambling, it could be drugs, and it could also be um, um, sugar. So there's the physiological effects. And when your body's used to something all the time physiologically, when you remove it, you may notice some withdrawal. Now, sugar withdrawal, um, physiologically speaking, I'm going to talk about the psychological piece too in a second, but physiologically speaking, it's not like alcohol withdrawal or you know, other drug withdrawal where you get this 
pronounced, even caffeine withdrawals far worse, physiologically speaking. But you may notice that food just tastes more bland. That's the withdrawal physiologically. Your, 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 your brain was used to sweetness. Now you eliminate it, and now food just doesn't taste as good. That'll take you about a week to get rid of. And that's not really the big problem, though. That part right there is not that big of an issue. The bigger issue is the psychological piece. If you're using sugar as a way to make yourself feel better or to comfort yourself or as a way to distract yourself, when you remove that, you've lost your way of comforting yourself. You've lost your way of distracting yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you have to deal with whatever it was that you were you were trying to, to numb or whatever. And this is true for anything that you use. Well, wasn't the way. first part of that figuring out what those triggers are. Totally. Like, like when when you feel the urge, uh, like what time it is uh, during the day, like uh, what what sparked that in, in terms of like um, you, what kind of feeling you have, like is it, if you've been depressed all day, like is, is certain things like stressing you out, like uh, are you prone to then going and getting uh, this, this sugar to kind of cope with that thing? Uh, but yeah, you have to find you have to find something else to replace that with, and and to be able to, uh, you know, create a new healthier habit, uh, and, and then create barriers sort of around, uh, you know, what your your go to is. So I I like talking about this because this is a this has been a, a lifelong uh, struggle for myself. <laughs> You're and, recovering. Yeah, I've been, I've been a, a, a long so time. So many Mike and Ike's recovering sugar ad, uh, addict for sure. And there's there, and this may or may not work for you, but I'll I'll give you some things that uh, I've pieced together over decades of of working on this myself and and attempting and failing, attempting and failing, and getting better and better and better at it. Uh, one one thing I noticed for sure was, uh, I, I once I started to avoid uh, processed foods, and this includes the the healthy processed foods like protein bars. Mm. Uh, if it's got sugar, alcohols, and artificial sweeteners in it. Um, those are what is it? I think it's a hundred or a thousand times sweeter than yeah. than regular sugar. It's still giving that perception it's of powerful. sweet. So yeah, it's it, it it gives you that perception even more. Um, like that. This was even why it was so hard for me to get rid of like diet cokes. Was like that was like the kind of the last straw for me was like eliminating that because it still was giving me that feeling of like getting that much sugar even though I wasn't getting real sugar. So. Uh, getting rid of all of that. Um, and I would say South said a week, it, it took me a, a little bit longer than a week. I'd say it took me about a solid month um, before like f the, the taste of fruit came back. Like literally I could eat a, a strawberry, blueberries, a banana, and they like tasted like nothing. Mm. Like I, they tasted bland for me for many, many years. I just, I never even really cared for fruit because of that. And it wasn't until I eliminated all the, all the, the processed uh, uh, sugars and, and artificial sweeteners out of the diet and and consistently did that, like really, really good for a, at least a solid month. And then when I would start to have things like strawberries and bananas and blueberries, uh, I, I was so blown away by how amazing they tasted, but I they never tasted like that for me because of how much I was constantly eating mm -hmm. sugar. So that was one thing that really helped. The second thing that helped a lot uh, was actually doing like a ketogenic diet, a higher fat diet, lower carbohydrate. Um, I noticed when, and so, you know, keto would, would, would work probably well for this. Carnivore would work uh, really well for this. Um, I, I've recommended like Whole30 to people before to get them going on this for a while will help like with the Whole Foods. But uh, a higher fat, lower carbohydrate intake seemed to kick uh, kick some of the, the crazy cravings that I would get. What mm. I would find if I had Let's say something that wasn't even like lots of sugar, just like a, a major car, a quick carb, like a, a um, oatmeal for breakfast. I'd have oatmeal and, and blueberries for breakfast, and man, two hours later, I would just be craving mm -hmm. food uh, more. And if I let that go longer than two or three hours, then the the sweet and the bad mm -hmm. would start to crave even harder. So uh, switching to a breakfast like eggs and bacon and 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 like maybe a fatty meat. Uh, or you know butter in there or avocado like having that for breakfast uh i noticed not only satiated me but it also eliminated a lot of the cravings that i was having for the sweet so those are just a couple things that um and like anything else i i, I would wing myself off i wouldn't go if you're you know first evaluate how how bad your sugar addiction is are you eating you know 150 grams a day 200 300 grams a day like uh, figure out where you're at and and slowly start to scale out. And the way I would scale out is by first uh, eliminating the the processed foods, uh, uh, eliminating because sugar fruit not bad. I mean that's that and for me that's what I'm always looking for. I'm looking for 
you know, 90% or all of my sugar is coming from fruit now. And then the rest of it is not found in my foods or uh, other bullshit. We've seen uh, products uh, be developed around this where they try to change the actual flavor of sweet and turn it into like a sour or a bitter. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I, I was, it's interesting. That I, I would love to see the success rate with that. But obviously, you know, that, that's something that you already have to agree to want yeah. to put in before then you grab your normal like Snicker bar or whatever to kind of cope with. It's like it eliminates the pleasure of it. Are you really going to do that? Yeah, it's, it, it requires you to stop, be aware enough to do something then, then to, de- to then make the thing that is pleasurable to you uh, not be pleasurable anymore, um, which may work if it is a, if it's a, a type of yeah, barrier. if you're disciplined enough. Yeah, if it's a barrier for you, um, and you and you take that extra step, you know, if you, you have to address both. You have to address the, oh, the physiological aspect of it, like we're talking about where, you know, food tastes bland. That one's not that hard to deal with. Uh, when you take out the psychological piece, the psychological piece is the hard part. It's like, why, what is it that this food is providing? Um, typically, it's pleasure. It feels good. Okay, why am I seeking this pleasure? And perhaps you're addicted to good feelings, which is which is very, very common. All of us have dealt with this, or most people have dealt with this. Or maybe you're just feeling bad about something, um, and, and that's your way of, of distracting yourself. And so it does it does require a certain level of, of uh, you know willingness to Im- increase or improve that self awareness, um, it's sometimes people try to fix a problem by n- still remaining unaware and just going on a strict diet of some su- some type. And what that tends to lead to is you restrict binge type model, which just doesn't work. So that self awareness piece is is such an important part of uh, working on any type of a. Uh, you know, I hate to use the word addiction because that's a clinical term, but anything that you feel has power over you uh, that you wish didn't have that much power over you. Next question is from Fit Nikki. I'm a middle school PE teacher and I'm passionate about lifting. How would you teach a weightlifting class if you were the teacher? Would you start body weight and then teach them lifts? Any ideas on programming would be great. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd start with Prime. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, correctional exercises would be phenomenal. Um, basic exercises that are really good that you can teach, because this is a group, so you're a little bit of a challenge, right? You're teaching a group of kids, so it's hard to be you know, individualized, but um, I would teach a, st- a st- standard lunge. Um, it's easier for somebody to do that than it is for them to do a squat with, with decent mechanics. Um, you could try push-ups. Push-ups, you know, I know they do those in school, but if you've ever watched kids do push-ups, mm. it's usually pretty terrible um, mm-hmm. the way that they tend to do them. So you could start with just a plank where the kids are just holding themselves up by their arms and you're timing them for, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. Um, and then you could do, you know, play drills. You know, because here's the thing as a teacher, um, we can all remember the, the few teachers that we had that we really enjoyed, right? The ones that really made an impact. And the reason why we remembered them is they made learning really fun. So I think when you're working with kids, because I've trained a lot of kids, it's when I'm training adults, it tends to be more about making sure everything I'm doing is right for them. When I'm teaching kids, I want to make sure that the experience is right. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I want- yeah. I think too, though, the middle school is a little bit of an older kid. Uh, I think that you, you can go a little bit further, not much further than that. Uh, you know, it's sort of on the cusp of, I took a weight, a legit weight training class, like in high school and I totally benefited from it. Like all the, you know, mechanics of it, the levers, the technique, uh, and, and I loved it. And that's something that I was glad to have. And I know it's not offered at every school and I wish it was, uh, in terms of like the middle school, I think it's it's definitely teaching the movements. So if you do if you do want to go like the the body weight route, I think that's smart. I think it's it's slowing the whole class down and it's really being able to articulate. Uh, you, you know, where they are in space. So they're very aware that their knees traveling a certain distance, they're holding their body, like have them like freeze, you know, like at a certain part of the movement and everybody freezes and you kind of are, are more aware of this. The reason why I brought up Prime is just to have them go through those three movements so they can see, you know, oh, wow, my, my arms can't stay touched to the wall. 
uh, you know, for the wall press. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I can't twist my body like that, you know, with, with my upper back, uh, you know, to, to be able to produce a windmill, you know, I can't, I can't uh, squat with, with it touching all points. Like it, it's just, it's, it's really raising that awareness. And then, you know, I would think that really focusing the attention on the body weight exercise, like I said, mm-hmm. lunge, push-ups, squats, like air squats, you know, basic things, but really like, you know, taking your time uh, with it. I'll give you an example of, a, of like a way to make it kind of fun because it's just a couple things I used to do with kids. One thing I would do is to work on balance and strength. I would have a kid balance on one foot and then I'd drop either jacks or pencils or something on the ground around them. And it's mm-hmm. okay, how many can you pick up? without b- putting your other foot down. And it would be a game, like, oh, you got five or you mm. got six, and they're mm-hmm. just bending over, picking up while they're standing on one yeah, foot. Yeah, games are super effective. Yeah, another one that I would do is I would have them stand on one foot, and we would hit a balloon back and forth. And the goal was for them to miss the balloon but stay on that one foot. So I'd hit it to them, and then they'd hit it back, and we'd go back and forth. Um, making the things fun is just as important as doing the right things with kids because you want to create a, a good association with exercise, a lot of kids have a bad association with PE. You know, like, oh, my teacher made me run the mile. Oh, it sucked. Everything sucked, and they don't want to do it. Then the second they don't have to be active, they're done. Mm-hmm. One of the best things you could do is create a good association so they can think back and be like, oh, wow, Mrs. Johnson, she was – that class was great. We did these wonderful stretches. We did these fun games. You know, I really enjoyed it. Now you've you've potentially created kind of this lifelong association, a positive association uh, with exercise. Yeah, I love the I love the prime idea that Justin's saying with the assessment tool in there. I think that's a valuable thing. I think that uh, Maps Anywhere protocol I think is is phenomenal. There's a lot of great core body weight stuff that's in there that I think you could teach uh, to middle school kids. And then uh, to piggyback off of what Sal's saying, you know, I, I remember teaching like some of my boot camp classes where I had all the kids come and. You know, we do fun things like that where we we would do sprints on the lawn and we try and make I'd make games out of it. You know, I know you can't. I know steal the bacon is not something we can do anymore in school these days, which is unfortunate. Really? But well, you can't just, steal the bacon. No, you can't do red rover. I thought steal the bacon is gone too. Is it How steal, can you? Why was it steal the broccoli or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I would get them in a line too and do like. Nobody uh, wants to steal the broccoli. Walking lunges, and then I would, you know, like blow a whistle, and they'd have to stop where they're at and stabilize or balance, you know. So they do like l- walking lunges in a line, all of them together in a group, mm-hmm. and then have them pause at the top while they're balancing on one leg. And yeah. Then, so th- there's a lot of things like that that you red can light, get, green light. Yeah, you can get creative like that, um, and I think that's I think that's true. I think Sal's right. I think you can't. You can't overcomplicate the programming to where uh, you're just you're at that age. You're trying to introduce them uh, to exercise. You're trying to make it fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you want to you want to encourage good movement, but then at the same time too, you don't want to overcomplicate it so much that because teaching someone a, a squat mechanic is is extremely difficult. You know, yeah. teaching them how to deadlift is at that age. It's really really, and then in a group setting. You're talking about, and then also fun. I mean, that's good. to to do it well. You'd have to stop the class every every minute and and break everything down. So, and kids nowadays are so much less active that you're. Yeah, it, it yeah would, I know. I mean, man. I'm serious. It yeah. would be like, and by the time they're in middle school, so you're dealing with what twelve year old yeah. kids. Any movement is great. Yeah, 12, 13 year old. They don't want to sweat. You know, they got looking at the girl over there. The girl's like, I don't want to mess up my hair. And they, none of them are active because nobody's active anymore. Yeah. So keep it basic and fun would be the, the the main pieces of advice I could give. And then if you're doing the correctional exercise stuff with that, then you can start to move from kid to kid and mm-hmm. you know help them out. All right, we're all going to get on the floor. We're going to get in a position called 90-90. Here's what I want you guys to do. Then stand up and walk around, tell jokes, have fun with them, see, show them what they can do with their leg or whatever, and, and try and make it kind of a, a more positive experience. Next question is from Max C. Smith. I've been addressing forward shoulder for about a year and have made good progress with my posture, but my neck still shoots forward. Any tips or strategies to help with this? Yeah, those are two mm-hmm. separate things there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so roll, when your shoulders roll forward, usually it's also accompanied by the head forward position where the head kind of juts forward. But that doesn't mean if you fix one, you fix the other one. You have to work on them a little bit separately. Now, we tend to talk a lot about working on the forward shoulder position We've only talked maybe a few times on the podcast about the actual neck yeah. uh, positioning. Um, but with, with your neck positioning, here's a great way you can kind of work on that. Um, stand up against the wall so that your shoulders, butt, ankle, uh, your, your heels, and the back of your head is touching the wall. 
And then what you want to do is you want to give yourself a little bit of a double chin and mm -hmm. see if you can make your, your neck longer. And you want to push your, your head into the wall while giving yourself a double chin and simultaneously trying to make your neck longer. So if that makes sense, yeah. so can it put There's a down? little nodule like in the back of your head that you can feel it comes to kind of a point. Uh, and that's what we're trying to shoot to get back to, to the wall. So really kind of like tucking that chin back and pulling it back. Like I'm almost like turtling myself back to the wall uh, is a great drill. And also neck cars. So this is something we have in Prime Pro where it actually, you know, shows you how to safely uh, control and, and articulate your neck in different, uh, uh, you know, directions. So you have, you gain access to that. So it's not just your, your go-to isn't always under stress. I'm sticking my head mm. forward. It's called the occipital. That's the that's the, yeah, the bone. bone. Yeah, yeah, right in the back of the head. Yep. There. Yeah, I mean the zone one test is phenomenal for this. Uh, that I mean that that's a staple go to move. I did a video uh, recently um, where I talked about squat priming and uh, addressing my forward head is one of my uh, go to things I have to do every time because I I do still have that so I still battle upper cross syndrome. Uh, which is the rounded shoulders and the forward head, and more so forward head than I have rounded shoulders. So I could totally relate to this question. Uh, so this literally, just practicing zone one in prime is is phenomenal. As far as an exercise that's good for that too, uh, prone cobra. Uh, prone cobra can be a great uh, great exercise for that movement, and you can do it on the ground or do it on a stability. But ball. you really got to focus on the neck part. You know, yeah. If you, if you just look up. And bring your head back. You're, oh yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna fix that part. No, no, and and, that, and that's just it. You the that's why the zone one first. You need to be aware of what that feels like to set your head back, right? Because mm -hmm. if you if you just cue somebody to bring your head back, a lot of times people actually can't even to, can't even articulate that. That's why I say double chin. I think everybody can knows yeah. what that feels They'll like. They'll look yeah. up and they almost they have lift their chin up to get back no. you know, instead of pulling it back. No, you're sliding the head back as if it were on a you know on a on a tr on a track. Yeah. You're not trying to look back. Somebody's poking with their finger right at your chin and it's pushing you directly back. Exactly. So, and and this is why zone 1 is so good. It's a, so you, we're using in the zone one maps prime we're using a wall to give you feedback the wall mm -hmm. is not necessary for you to prime all these things it's just there so you can feel it right so when you see us uh, address it and then you and then you try and emulate it and you can feel your head go back and then hit the wall you're like okay i, I get what i'm doing the next step is understanding what that feels like then learning to incorporate that on all movements yeah. Because when you lay down and you probably do a bench press, you don't even think because you're thinking about your chest and bench pressing, mm -hmm. you let your head probably creep forward. When you're doing bicep curls and you're thinking about just squeezing your biceps, you let your head creep forward. And so once you understand what you what you need to articulate in your neck, because you've done like a zone one test in MAPS Prime, then you learn to apply that all the time. Like I'm constantly thinking about that when I'm on the computer or am I sitting at dinner? Like mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just do that movement and yeah. trying to do that as often as possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have another drill too that uh, once you get that mechanism where you're you're pulling back and you're able to understand what that feels like. Uh, we actually have this too in the test. So if, if you're squatting, which I actually recommend, you probably do this more when you're hip hinging. So you get a long enough stick where it goes all the way to the top of your head down, uh, you know, to your tailbone. And I'm holding the stick behind my head, but now I'm pulling my 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 neck and my chin back to touch the stick. And now I'm going to fold my body down uh, as I'm looking down, because I know a lot of times as you look down is when you you know your tendency to stick mm -hmm. your head forward. Uh, you know that's definitely a common thing. So that this would help you to be able to kind of start looking down, but also be conscious of you know keeping that chin tucked back uh, in place. Now I do this I do this when I fly an airplane. So I use a neck pillow when I fly. An playing because I tend to like to fall asleep and sometimes when I wake up my neck is a little bit stiff so what I'll do is while I'm sitting in the chair I'll drop my shoulders I'll give myself a double chin and then I'll I'll consciously try to make my neck longer while I'm holding that position almost like I'm creating traction I'm separating the vertebrae in my neck with that straight position it alleviates a lot of pressure now here's the key with all this you got to do it all the time yeah mm -hmm. if you if you just do this like a workout like like when you squat, you know, two days a week or three days a week, it's not going to work. You have to do this throughout the entire day. So when you're in the car, use the headrest as feedback. When you're at work, every hour, practice it. Every time you're conscious of it, practice it. If you're standing in line, practice it because you're trying to 
change a, a normal, natural, default recruitment pattern that you've had for probably a long time. And the only way you're going to change it is if you create a new one. And the only way the new one gets created is if it overrides the old one, which means you got to do it more. You have to be, get to the point where that is done more than the old way. Then your neck positioning will start to change. And at first, it's going to be tiring and annoying, and you might get sore, and you got to do it over and over and over. But eventually, if you do it long enough, it starts to become – um, you know, a natural thing. I mean, uh, a good example is I'm, I'm working on with my daughter right now on her foot. She's got really flat feet, um, uh, almost where, where the arches almost collapse. So I'm doing foot exercise with her and we, we do them, you know, two times a day is as much as I can remind her to do. And then I tell her to practice as much as possible. What I'm noticing now is that just standing normally, it's a little bit better for her now. It's become more natural. This is how you do any type of correctional movement. It has to become more natural because you could consciously think of putting your neck in a better position, but you're not going to stay conscious of your neck position all day long. That would be you know, neurotic. That would be a terrible way to, to live. You want it to be natural. The only way it's going to happen is to practice it frequently, I'd say, as much as you can remember. Um, not super in high intensity, but just perfect. Perfect form each time. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and books and resources they're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.